Is this the right prop for my boat? What about a propeller for this motor? Wait a second. What about a prop for this? That doesn't even take a prop. Is this the right propeller for my trailer? What propeller are you guys running on your bike? Maybe this propeller? I'm gonna show you how to find the right propeller for your boat. Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today, I'm talking everything I can to get you in the right setup for a propeller on your outboard, on your pontoon, or your fishing boat. It's all the same. Every single boat and every single motor combination is unique in terms of finding the right propeller. So all those questions I see asked on forums and groups online of what propeller are you running on this size boat? What propeller should I have on my boat? I'm gonna show you how to find the right propeller for your boat. Your first step to getting the right prop for your boat is making sure that you have a tachometer on your boat that is working properly. Let's start with the two factors. What we have when we talk about propellers, you're gonna have a number on most propellers. This one doesn't have it, of course. You're gonna have a number stamped on most propellers and it's gonna look something like 14X12 or 14X17. This is referring to your diameter by your pitch. Diameter is the diameter across, if this is a circle, of your propeller. That means basically the size of the propeller that it's going to run. Your pitch is a little more complicated. Your pitch is the degree of angle of your actual blades of your propeller. And the way that they measure this is one revolution of the propeller through a solid. So picture this going through like a block. I like to think of a block of jelly of this turning. And as it turns, the pitch of the blades is gonna make it travel forward. Well, we're gonna measure from here all the way around. And if this travels forward 10 inches, it might be a 14 by 10. If it travels forward 17 inches, 14 by 17. So that's our pitch is that second number always. This is where this is all gonna to start to make sense. The only way to truly find what propeller is best for your boat is to take it out you're gonna potentially have to test a couple props. We can try to get it close. There's some propeller selectors online where you can go through and at least get a ballpark. The only way to know for your boat and your situation is to get ideally just the captain in the boat, nothing else. We're gonna get that baby up, wide open throttle, pinned all the way down. We're gonna trim it out, trim up, so that you get the optimal performance. You're gonna lift the bow. You're gonna get your boat riding as high and fast as possible and you gotta look at your tachometer. You gotta see how many RPMs you are spinning at wide open throttle. This is why every boat and every motor is a different situation. I just went on and found a few wide open throttle ranges for some different motors. A new Mercury 90 four stroke, ideally is gonna run somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 RPMs. If I'm by myself in the boat, I wanna be tickling 6,000 RPMs. I wanna be right up there because when I add people and gear and gas and everything else, that wide open throttle RPM is going to lower. It's gonna add more drag, more load to the boat. I wanna still be in this range, even with a full loaded boat. A Yamaha four stroke 70, that's actually made to run between 53 and 6,300 RPM. So you can see why the right propeller for a 90 or even a 70 or 75 Merc might not be the same for your Yamaha. Our gear ratios and the lower unit are different. The motors are made to run at different RPM ranges. Maybe you've got an older boat, like a 1991 to 05 Mercury 62 stroke is made to run 5,000 to 5,500. Two strokes typically are gonna run lower RPMs at wide open throttle. That's just the way that they're made. The reason this is important you need to be running in that ideal range, even loaded down with as many people and gears you're gonna put in, because that's the way the motor is designed to run at wide open throttle. You can do some damage to the motor. Most of the new motors have rev limiters, so if you hit too high, it's gonna You're gonna hear that. If it's too low, you're gonna be loading down that motor and potentially causing issues and longevity of the life of your motor. This goes for fishing boats, pontoon boats, everything. 
So our big thing, when we get in a range, in order to fine tune, say I'm running 4,800 RPM with my 94 stroke, I need to get my RPMs up quite a bit. The way that this works is every inch that I go up in pitch is going to lower my RPMs at wide open throttle about 100 to 150 RPMs. Every inch in pitch that I go lower, I'm gonna gain RPMs. Think of it like going lower, like shifting down in your car. You're gonna hit some RPMs higher when you drop from third into second. That's how, it's, how it runs. Your motor doesn't have a transmission, at least not these that we're talking about, but your outboard, we can adjust that RPM range by the pitch of the prop. Diameter is gonna play in a little bit, but pitch is gonna be our biggest factor in terms of getting those RPMs up or down for optimal performance. Typically, if I'm running on the high end with an empty boat of my RPMs, I'm gonna have a lot of low end torque. I'm gonna be able to lift the boat a little quicker, plane it out faster. That's a good thing. If I really just want speed, then I might go on the lower end, but there's this fine tuned balance where we wanna be in the middle of that wide open throttle range when we're loaded down, or in my preference is to be closer to the high end, even with a load of people on the boat. Last couple factors, different types of propellers. We're not gonna dive super deep into this. Aluminum propellers come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. This happens to be a four blade. Typically a four blade is gonna help if you have any cavitation issues. What do I even say? Something about cavitation. So what we get on a four blade, it's usually gonna be a little smaller diameter, but we get more surface area in total than comparing to a three blade in the same diameter. The other big debate you're gonna hear is aluminum versus stainless. Listen, this is a personal preference. Stainless is not gonna flex as much. It is heavier, if that even makes a difference, but it's not gonna flex. It's gonna give you a little better grab. It tends to be better and can help with some cavitation ventilation issues. But if you hit something with stainless, the impact is going into your outboard lower unit instead of getting damaged and you're still gonna damage your prop. But it's gonna pass a lot of that damage into your lower unit. Aluminum, I've literally seen on my own boat hitting a log, going fast, most of one of these blades just shear right off. No damage to the lower unit, everything was good there. We limped at home, it was just fine, but that's the beauty of aluminum is if you hit something, you don't do damage to your motor necessarily. You still can, but less likely to. And it helps with cavitation if you always have a backup prop in your boat ready to go because if you try to find one and you're out and about on the water, best of luck and it's probably going to be a million dollars. You act like you've been there before. I have. That is the Prop 101. The biggest thing I can't stress enough is your first step to getting the right prop for your boat is making sure that you have a tachometer on your boat that is working properly because without seeing your RPMs at wide open throttle, everything else is irrelevant. You can take guesses, you might hurt your motor, you might guess just right, but you have to dial it in by looking at RPMs at wide open throttle first and foremost. That's it, that's the biggest factor. Then you can take everything else into account to fine tune for your boat. Hope you found this helpful. Give us some feedback, leave a comment, hit the like button, definitely subscribe if you haven't yet, because we're gonna cover some more stuff similar to this in the future.